Jeans here. <laughs> Good to see you again. Just thought I'd pop on here and introduce the video. So we left off at the last video with I'd just done the first initial collaging of the board that I was working on with some of the printed papers that I'd made in the very first vlog that I did. So uh, in this video, uh, the third video, I show you how I progressed from there using the collaged papers on the board and then all the different mark making, how I came in after that and then taking the painting to sort of its final, um, final end stages. So you get to see the whole kind of journey through there and somewhere in the middle there uh, I also stopped to make some soup for lunch so I've filmed a little of that. I thought that I would just show you the um, show you the painting finished uh, so that you can actually see the size. I don't think it shows in the photos it's hard to tell what size it is. So here it is <laughs> quite a big one. <laughs> I don't know if it fits. <laughs> I don't know if it fits in the screen very well. Um. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so yeah, this is the this is the size of the of the finished painting. So I've called it. Uh, I've called it across the pond. Uh, for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, it felt to me when I was creating the piece, and I talk a bit about that in, in the blog, uh, it felt to me like it was uh, New York City, which is where my husband is from, was from New Jersey, but um, just very close to the border to New York, and, uh, and, and Perth and Fremantle, uh, Western Australia. And that's how the painting kind of unfolded. The, you'll see that as the um, images start to come out. And that's what I chose to follow in this particular piece. And it was, it was a lot of fun. I quite enjoyed um, the journey that this one took me on. And the, you'll see in the beginning of the video I use a smudge stick. So I like to actually smudge the... Um, art supplies that I'm using and myself and it's a kind of a little ritual that I just do before I get into creativity and it has meaning for me. I'm not recommending or suggesting that it needs to be something that you do or include and obviously everybody has their own way of connecting to their creativity. It's something that I like to do and I just thought I'd share that with you because it's part of um, my process. And so I just wanted to share if you have, you know, somebody has questions about where, what that um, smudge stick is. So it's a Palo Santo smudge stick. Uh, I purchased mine here at, at a local um, store that stocks them. They are from Ecuador and Palo Santo is considered a sacred wood in South America. And I, so that's the, the smudge that I use. And then um, I just wanted to say that like when I'm filming, it's quite a bit different to when I'm not filming. So I think when I'm not filming, I get quite a bit more lost in the whole kind of journey. When I say lost, I'm, or maybe I mean absorbed. And when I'm filming, um, it's like there's a part of me that needs to remember to switch the cameras and, you know, turn one off, turn one on and, um, you know, zoom in or zoom out, that kind of thing. So there is a, a little bit of a dance that goes on. So it is slightly different if you're curious to know. Uh, it is, yeah, I would say definitely different to when I'm, just creating without the camera going. So nevertheless, I hope that you enjoy um, seeing behind the scenes and I will uh, 
uh, see you on the other side. <laughs> and thanks for uh, stopping by to watch. See you. Here we are starting with the substrata of the collaged uh, papers that were printed in the first video. And here's Mango all snuggled up next to me in the studio. So let's begin. Here I am using a Palo Santo smudge stick to just smudge everything, all the art supplies, including the sacred toilet roll. <laughs> and I had finished the last video with uh, some white that I had been putting over the collage papers and now I'm coming over with some bold colours I'm using it's, this is the um, magenta quinacridone goldens uh, liquid paints and just prior to that I've been using quite a bold uh, ready orange colour and now I'm coming over with the sacred toilet roll <laughs> and doing some uh, circular marks and then I'm using I think it's a wooden tool just the end of a uh, a broken handle with a you know circular wooden handle and I'm just have have pushed that into the paint and I'm just making marks on the canvas with that I like to use a variety of mark making tools so some man-made, some that I find in nature. Here I'm coming over with a fan-shaped paintbrush. Just very light and loose, using a bit of charcoal, make some very tiny little marks here and there. I'm outlining a few pieces of paint that I really like, just making some swirly marks and now I'm coming over with some solid black as a contrast. You'll see me coming backwards and forwards with various paintbrushes and mark making tools and What I'm really kind of enjoying is, is bringing in into these layers something that is going to really light me up. So I'm looking for combinations and uh, so colour combinations, texture, a mixture of uh, different marks and patterns that I bring in over the top of those that I find interesting and can see through. Often I, I really like the ones where I can see through underneath a little bit. Blocking out some solid sections as well. And putting some outlines around various other parts. Lots of variety going on. And it looks, yeah, it looks very chaotic, very busy, very messy. 
uh, very kind of abstract and I I do move quite quickly while I'm doing this the whole mark making thing and then sometimes occasionally like here I'm moving uh, very slowly across the canvas and obviously I've sped up some of these videos so it looks very fast. Coming in with just lines. And now at this point I'm going to start calming, calming it down a bit. So there I sort of started to make a pattern on the white but then I've decided just to spread the white a little bit further around and make it larger and find a little bit of quiet space for the eye. I'm using my fingers here to smooth the paint out and I'm coming over with a skewer, a wooden skewer and just zooming in a little bit so you can see I'm actually just scrawling into that white paint so that the uh, colourful paint underneath shows through and this is just a sort of piece that popped into my head at some point when I was writing and so I've put it onto the canvas make a wish any wish blow it to the wind and then take a step towards towards it as if it was already as if it had already come to be And so here I'm putting more white on the canvas, big bold strokes with a flat, wide flat paintbrush. And although you may not be able to see it here in quite detail, but I'm coming over with the white uh, in this area brushing just lightly because there's quite a lot of texture up in this corner and as I brush the white over it's actually bringing the textures out of the collaged papers underneath. As you can see, there's a little bit more uh, solid areas of colour coming in now that are blended. Still quite busy. However, now I'm starting to quieten it down. So this is where I started feeling like there was buildings in the picture. Some of the collage papers from underneath when I started to bring in more solid colours and was quietening down with some of the greys and the blues. So these colourful um, bits were starting to look like buildings. And so I started outlining them.
in a really dark blue or a black, just giving them a little more definition. And again, it's really what's just coming out of the out of the canvas as I'm as I'm moving across it. Different things are catching my eye, and so I'm pushing things back and bringing things forward that have come out of the mark making process. So this is, for me, a very kind of intuitive, but I'm also just listening really to the canvas, just following what the canvas is showing me, what it's revealing, and deciding whether I want to bring that out more or whether I want to cover it over with something else. it's kind of a knowing or a, a sense of, for me it's a feeling of energy coming towards me at this point I was feeling like it was a city um, particularly in the upper half of the painting and so then I just started bringing things out that that seemed like it was already there but just needing to be more strongly brought into focus. So here I'm using the black to make an, a sort of impressionistic bridge. And at this point there started to, I started to feel the water wave. So it felt definitely like there was a river or a, um, a lake of some kind appearing in the centre of the painting and I started bringing that in in a much more definite way here. You can see that. And I like that. I like that there are hidden uh, meanings underneath that get covered over or things that get brought out. And so these are the types of, um, it's kind of like creating a puzzle or bringing, you know, the puzzle is already there and I'm just helping sort of chip away and bringing it out. So many things change. Sometimes I'll put a certain colour on and really like it and other times I'll paint over it. Here a pathway was starting to, there was like a darker green and then there was a kind of a yellowy orange 
that looked like a wavy pathway so I just outlined it with a darker colour. And here I'm just creating a, a roof on some of the buildings so that they look a little bit more three-dimensional. And then I've just gone right across the canvas and just highlighted some windows and ledges and other things. And I've brought these figures out that uh, were at the bottom of the canvas. There was quite a lot of black paint there that uh, was sort of looking like the outline of heads and backs. And so I... I made them more defined and brought in a few more colours, uh, a skirt on one of the figures and some pants on the others and just uh, created them a little bit more. And so up in this top left-hand corner, uh, an angel was starting to appear. And so I've, I'm just developing the wings here a little bit more and putting a lighter colour. So initially it was quite a dark colour. And so I started putting um, some white, some uh, magenta, very pale, uh, diluted down with a bit of white um, pink and some yellow just to bring that out and add as you can see, it's starting to become defined, but I define it even more later on. Here I'm adding some uh, Joe Sonia yellow green, but I end up changing this colour and um, bringing it back to a blue. This having a little break for lunch and I decide to make a minestrone soup with lots of garlic and some organic uh, bacon and blended up some some herbs some cracked pepper and some oregano and some mixed herbs some thyme Throwing in some carrots. I think there was leeks at the beginning, some leeks and onions. Some carrots and a few zucchini. So this is going to be quite a large pot. A little bit of broccoli, in it goes. I used uh, red kidney beans, some organic ones. I think I used two or three tins. 
and a heaped teaspoon of sea salt. And yes, some vegetable stock and water. And then I popped it up on our wood stove and put some chopped parsley on it. Then back to the studio. So here I'm just closing my eyes and just spending a little bit of time running my hands over the canvas and just in quiet meditation here, just feeling into the energy of it. Asking, I usually ask what else would like to be brought out, what else would like to be seen. Just adding some windows, some highlights, some definition on the building structures. And then to the bridges. And there's a few trees, what looks like a sort of a park area. And here I'm bringing the, um, the three figures, just defining them a little bit more. And so what I ended up doing was um, I had some more printed collage papers that were on a tissue paper and also on some sewing uh, pattern paper. And so I just Googled uh, a couple of iconic Perth and Fremantle buildings, printed them out onto the tissue paper and the sewing pattern paper. And then I have uh, adhered them to the canvas. And then the other one, so I've done a sort of loose uh, 
interpretation of the Fremantle markets and a loose interpretation of Elizabeth Key. Now I'm kind of blending the riverbank on the other side. I've added some stenciling. I've defined the angel up in the top left hand corner quite a bit more. And now we're sort of starting to come to the finish of the painting. So I've done a quite a bit of finger. I did some finger painting and some stenciling. And I put a moon in on the top right hand corner. And I put a very tiny moon in on the Perth side, just near the Elizabeth Key down there in the central part of the painting. So after I took it down and I peeled, uh, here I am peeling off all of the, uh, the tape around the edges. I did do some fine details and brought in a little bit of gold highlighting a little bit more stenciling in the garden areas. I put in a little bridge. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, vlog. And I just wanted to say, please leave comments. It's great to hear your feedback. If you'd like to see more of this vlog type format from me, please let me know in the comments below and click like on the video or subscribe if you on the red button that says subscribe just click on that if you'd like to see uh, videos as I upload them in the future. I look forward to reading your comments and getting back to you. If you want to know any other details about anything that you've seen in the vlog or um, I will list below the paints that I used and the uh, music will be um, linked. Hey, thanks again for watching and stopping by and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.